All right, thanks for joining me on this video. Today we're going to be talking about how to make a project tracking web application in Esri's uh, ArcGIS Online. And we're going to be starting with ArcMap software because there's folks that, that aren't on Pro or don't have access to Pro uh, yet. So here we go. Uh, first thing you want to do is get your layers added to your project. Uh, projects is the main one here. That's why I have it turned on. And uh, just kind of go through, make sure you have your fields how you want them. Um, one of the things that you know, we added to this once, so we're going to build off an existing projects layer. So we added a phone number, an email, um, some different dates and different statuses. You'll also want to go to File Geodatabase, go to Properties, check your domains. Definitely encourage you to create domains um, so you can you can have a drop down uh, for standardization when you're entering data. This will be important online as well. Uh, status right now we just have completed projects, but we added a domain for you know, planning, canceled, funded, interested landowners. Uh, so we added all those, kind of built it as much as we could ahead of time. We did the symbol symbolization how we wanted brought in our background layers. Um, so save your project, make sure you're signed in, and then we'll share as a service. Call it what you want. And the biggest key here is to go to feature access and make sure you allow basically editing all these operations you want to uh, you can give it some tags description then run the analysis anything medium or low is not really critical and then so you can address them or you can just go and hit publish in the interest of time I'm not gonna go through the publishing process but rather skip right to ArcGIS online I'm going to go to my content page. So this is where it's going to upload. And so this is the one that um, we're working on here, the one we're in the process of uploading. So project tracking, it's going to come in as a feature layer. And what you're going to want to do then is click on the feature layer, open in Map Viewer or Map Viewer Classic. And again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through that, but you're going to essentially um, create a web map so so let's say we open that feature in a web web map um, this is what it's going to look like you can turn things on and off you can adjust the visibility as to when it's going to when that layer is going to be on and off based on when you zoom in as you can see for the zoom in that arrow goes along the scale um, you can switch to classic. So let's say we want to do some labeling. Um, you can have the option to create labels or, or manage labels in this case. I, I already turned them on, um, but this arrow again shows you when they're going to when they're going to turn on. So in this case, we're going to zoom in. You'll see the labels turn on. Um, so you can rename, you can move up or down, you can manage your labels. Uh, all right, you can also change the colors. So we'll save that. Uh, you kind of want it to get zoomed in where you want it before you go to the web application. Save it. Share it. The sharing should be the same level as the, the feature layer. All right, so you get it how you want to look in a web map first. So we got a feature layer, we got a web map. Now we're going to go to create a web app. Different things you can do. There's instant apps, uh, story maps, web, web app, dashboard. We're going to create a web app uh, from the web app builder. Project tracking is fine. Okay, so the first thing it's going to ask us to pick is the theme. So this is the overall look of it. 
There's a dashboard theme in here as well. For today, we're going to do the tab theme. You can change the colors. Uh, so we'll go to the next item here, which is maps. This is going to use the web map that we just uh, set up, the current map view. Widgets, so these are where the, the magic happens. So you're going to want a legend, you're going to want a layer list. Those two are in the side controller. If you click this little circle, that'll have the legend show up right away. I'm also going to add a base map to the to that, so you can change the base map right on the side. And then for my three main widgets, uh, well, first let's let's pick the search, and we can set it to you where you can search for projects and let's say you want to search by owner maybe uh, address parcel you can do that we'll add another one so if you want to search by rack parcels as well uh, parcel id okay so that'll help the search be a little bit more geared to what you're trying to do. Um, you can actually, before we get out of search, if you didn't want to search the whole world, um, this world geolocator, you can, a geocoder, you can take that off. So you're literally just searching within the items that you have in your map. So widgets, um, this is an important one. We're going to do filter. And this is where we're going to be able to filter our projects. And we're going to create some expressions here. We'll just kind of go through the data that we have. Uh, resource. So this is one that we have a domain or drop down for. So resource is any of. And then it's going to prompt the user to ask for which um, items you want to filter on. So we have resource. We have practice type. You'll see how this looks in a second. Um, Grant is another one. And lastly, we will do status. All right. Then we'll do a new filter for rack parcels, where we will filter by the rack score. OK. So we got those two filters. We're going to also add one or select and you can have it select a different number of different ways you want to be able to allow exporting of features so we're going to have it select from projects and also from the rack parcels lastly and most important we're going to add the smart editor and this is where you can add and edit point data so this is mostly going to be used for the projects because this is going to be one we're going to add to. Uh, so we're going to allow it to be able to delete. And we'll talk about smart actions and attribute actions later. Uh, but this general settings is one that you can play around with as well. Um, all kinds of different settings here. You may want to change where the edit button is. You may want to enable geometry edit by default. So we'll hit OK. We'll save that. And this might be a good spot where you want to launch. And kind of play around with what you have so far. So again, here's the layer list. You can turn on um, additional layers if you want. Rack parcels, for example. And I don't remember if the parcels, these rack parcels have labels set up. There we go. So as you zoom in, those labels will turn on. Again, all the labels and symbology you're going to want to fix in the web map, not the app. You can change the base map here to imagery. You can also make all these layers somewhat transparent if you want, just by clicking on the three dots. Um, as well as the visibility range. So you can play around with those. All right, so let's go to our 
filters first. So we can filter out projects by any of these categories that we selected. So if we want to know just which ones were clean water funded, um, then we can apply that filter. And it looks like we just have one dot there. That's clean water. Um, or practice type maybe is any of these three. And that'll filter out and grab you know, a handful of projects. And you can apply multiple ones from that. It'll, it'll give you, so maybe we just want to know of those three practice types, which ones are state kosher funded. And that yellow one is, is the winner. So you play around with filters. Select, so we can select from projects. And then this is where you can do a number of different things. You can edit them, but I want to show where you can export to a CSV file. And that's going to basically create something that you can open in Excel. You can work with it in Excel. Uh, it brings in what you selected. Here's the, the field names. So that's a handy little feature. And the main event here is the smart editor. So first off, let's clear our selected features. All right, so let's say we want to add a point. This is where you could also link it with field maps as well. But let's say we uh, want to add a drainage project here. We'll um, click on drainage and click on the point. Then we will fill out all of the different attribute fields we want to fill out. Um, it, you can set some parameters for the different fields. Here's your domains, your drop down. So drainage was the, the resource. Uh, project category type, then we're going to tell which. Um, so we'll go stormwater BMP for the practice type. You can add in comments which grant it should go to. You can add in uh, cost, date fields. So if you have your set domain set up correctly, it'll kind of prompt you for these. And we will save that one. So we have a new, a new point on our map we can then select. If you click on it, uh, it will give you the information. All right, let's uh, let's open up in Smart Editor. And right now, let's say we all we can do is delete it. So we can certainly do do that. But if we go back to our Smart Editor, this is where you want to play around with the different settings and. Uh, all kinds of different options here. Enable geometry edit. Let's, let's uh, see how that one goes. So you'll want to save your web app. All right. Let's go to our smart editor. Clear everything. All right, let's pick a new project here. Okay, so now we can edit our geometry a little bit, move that thing around. So, again, we could fill out information, but you guys get the idea, I think, now. And uh, so we can go here now and delete those two. So once you're tracking a bunch of different projects, uh, you can certainly go back to your content. And if you wanted to work with it in ArcGIS, uh, ArcMap, or ArcPro, then you can go to this project tracking. This is the feature layer that's just going to keep adding those. You add points in ArcGIS Online, and then it's going to store in this project tracking um, layer. And you can export that a number of different ways, but you can you can open it 
um, separately, but if you want to get it back to your desktop, you can export it to a shapefile or a file geodatabase and open it up on your desktop. So I hope that helps and you guys will be tracking stuff using ArcGIS Online. And uh, one last thing, if you want to create your little, little icon for yourself, um, we can go back and show you how to do that real quick here in the web mapping application. You can edit that application at any time after you've exited it. And we walk through the map, we walk through the widgets, attributes. So this is where you can upload a custom image if you want and change the, the text as well. All right. Thanks.